Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi. You can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Calvert alongside Father Joe Grimaldi, and welcome once again to another edition of the Father Joe Grimaldi Podcast. My good friends, I have some more great news. Star Lincoln has introduced Shop Star Express, swift, safe, and simple. Doing what we can, where we can, that is the Star Lincoln way. Star Lincoln is 100% compliant with every CDC guideline, and we sanitize our facility on a non-stop basis. Simply call 248-354-4900 and make an appointment to meet with one of Star's sales professionals or shop Star Express by going to W www.starlincoln.com Check out the incredible lineup of Lincoln vehicles, the Navigator, the Corsair, the Nautilus, Aviator, MKZ, and the Continental. You can essentially lease or buy your next Lincoln totally online. Our Star Lincoln service is by appointment only and is open from 8 until 5. Our new Lincoln vehicle showroom is now open by appointment only from 9 until 5. Yes, your sanctuary awaits. Go to starlincoln.com. That's Star lincoln.com i was watching i was streaming your mass on a saturday evening my god what a dull saturday night no, <laughs> well, it was early enough that we got started a little later uh, okay <laughs> either, either way i was here in my office right there watching you on my nice television set and i you know just basically following along with the mass it's interesting to see the new world order in the church you were celebrating the mass and it came time for your homily and i was blown away i was impressed beyond belief because i i've seen you in person obviously a lot but to watch you on television where i could really pay attention i thought you know when you're in the church sometimes you're distracted by so many different things that you don't really pay attention to the importance of the homily and I won't take up a lot of time with this but you're distracted by other people you see coming in oh there's a friend over there and this goes on throughout the mass although it's a little different now but I noticed that not only did you do a beautiful job with the homily I found myself saying this guy Father Joe who I know really well he puts a lot of work into these and I decided I wanted to ask you about this How long does it take you to prepare for your homily, be it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? How long does it take you to prepare? Okay, I'll just tell you my routine, okay? It's not certainly not something that's impossible, but basically you read the three readings, and you see which one is something that you could work on in a nice way for example and for example this coming sunday i'm not sure if it's going to be generosity or charity or whatever the case might be and then you try to find things that are related uh, to what you have read then you try to find things that uh, what is the message i really want to give people because you don't want to confuse people you want to give them just one message so is there something that i can take from each one of those readings and put them together or do i just concentrate on one of the readings i could concentrate on the gospel i can concentrate on the first reading or the new testament so you start thinking about it and it's not that you become obsessed with it matter of fact you may not even remember what the scriptures were but you remember the gist of them and if something happens on monday that can relate to it you try to make a mental note about that and so basically it takes days of you know putting things through your mind to see if you could come up with certainly one theme that makes any sense and basically this coming sunday i'm working on the idea of giving when we give we don't give from our surplus we give from our want mother teresa tells a story when and it's kind of you know i had the privilege of working with her well actually not working with her giving a couple of retreats Mm -hmm. to her sisters in rome and uh, she happened to be there and she used to say she gave the story of once when she lived in an area where this very poor family just had nothing nothing and so 
she came up with a cup of rice to give to the family and she gave it to the family and then she, the person that received it said oh wow i i'm gonna give half to my next door neighbor because and mother Teresa said, well, i don't think there's enough to do that and the woman says oh well they're in very much need as well and and matter of fact the neighbors weren't catholic they were muslims but she said i feel a lot better if i can give to the other person so and it brings across the point in a nice way that it's so easy for us to give from our surplus because it's a tax write-off or whatever the case might be but when we give from our wants when it hurts us a little bit as it hurts the receiver then we're doing something that's worthwhile in the eyes of god now i'm not saying that we should do without that's not what i'm saying but anyway i don't want to go on detail but you you think about these things and then you start putting them down on paper and i'll tell you why i'm not gifted like a lot of other preachers who can get up there and just expound you know i need to have the written word otherwise if i don't i can ramble on forever and people don't want to hear you rambling on so you make it as concise as you can without leaving out important points or what you think are important because that doesn't mean everybody thinks it's important you just write what you think is important and then you can deliver it in 10 or 12 or 13 minutes once you go beyond the 13 minutes or 14 yeah. minutes mm -hmm. you're starting to lose people there's no question here come the feet shuffling uh, yeah so yep. the thing is this you know we're looking at the uh, watch yep. and what makes it even worse now there is no watch to look at because usually there aren't that many people in the church <laughs> uh we're lucky where we are at the church where i'm at we do have a good number of people coming up on sundays and saturdays well they have to have tickets to get into the church and that's only because we're still keeping to the rule of 25 percent of its capacity mm. but we don't look at it that way it's more than 25 percent okay because we're allowed to do 50 percent but the thing is this that one space includes a family so it could be five people in that one space but that counts as one then six feet away you have a single person that counts as one so you no. have two but they're really six or seven in that pew huh so the thing is this that it's basically keeping the rules of uh, distancing uh, but up by the same token we count the families who could sit together as one as one ticket yeah so i i don't want to get off the point do you see what i mean about getting off the point yeah but so, I, I see what you're saying because in a full church back in the day pre-covid and we will we will get back to that, that yeah that, oh sure that time you know you're talking about a packed church you know you don't want to lose the crowd you right. know the one right. thing that that i used to and i think we've talked about this before is that comedy clubs have a green light, a yellow light, and a red light. And if the owner of the club senses that it's time for you to wrap it up, he'll hit you with the yellow light. Only you can see it. It's in the back, above the heads of the people. The red light means, say goodnight now. In other words, that's when you hear a comedian say, that's my time. I got to go. You've been a great audience. And he gets out of there. No one would dare do that to a priest, but your body clock or your body lights have to know when it's yellow light just turned on, it's time to wrap it up. And that's usually based on what the parishioners are doing in the church, correct? Yeah, and I do. Matter of fact, I would welcome that. It's to me, it's, you see, where I am now is unique too compared to other churches because we have a very very high ceiling the lights are recessed yeah and so but there's lots of them and right at the corner my left corner way up on top at the end of the church is where the recording takes place but it's not able to be seen by us by uh, anybody uh -huh. okay yeah so you don't know that you're being recorded I mean you do know but 
you don't you don't play to the camera no you can't because yeah. it, the camera is like any other that's place a, that's so a good idea it I is think, yeah but by the same token you can easily forget if you don't have people in the congregation you can easily forget and ramble on forever about that so that's an interesting point are there clocks an actual clock no 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 is that like they a, used to be is that a no, yeah i was gonna say is that a no no now I don't know if it's a no-no, but I, I think what it is is I, I don't know for Well, sure, it would give I'll, the parishioners too many times to forget what's going on and look at the clock, like how long have well, we been here. Yeah, but I, I okay. think, too, uh, what happens is the liturgical committee plays a big role in decorating the church. Yeah, sure. Now, in the old days, there wasn't a liturgical committee. There wasn't a, a whole group of people that designed the building of the church the pews and all of that so what happens is this if it doesn't fit into the decor it ain't going to be there okay right, let me yeah. put it that way i don't mean to be crass about it no but the thing is this that there's no space for it anywhere you have usually there's a loft that's uh, on yes. top of the church you yep. know this type of thing yeah uh, i we don't have one at saint hugo's so it's uh i used to like the balcony in yeah the church. balcony like and that, that a lot. kind of thing yeah. so anyway but, and there was a nice place for a clock up there, but now they don't have a clock. And Anyway. I think it would be good for the priest and not necessarily the parishioners. Oh, yeah, and you want a hook, too, if yeah. somebody would... <laughs> well, that's what I mean. That's the comedy, the comedy light system, all right? You know, it's like yeah. you've been a great, great group of parishioners. That's it for my, you know, I'm out of here, folks. Sure. Long story short, getting back to what we were talking about you're already thinking on a wednesday about what you'll be talking about on sunday well you should be yeah okay <laughs> well that's what i'm saying that's the so you're starting to build out from where you are right now you're thinking it's going to be generosity why do you think your homily on sunday is going to be built on generosity well because if you look at the gospel it has to do with what we've seen and heard for many years where Jesus is able to take the one fish and yeah. a few loaves of bread and make them into bread for people to eat who are hungry. And, and of course, for us, it's what we think is the Eucharist. But you have the generosity of the young boy who's able to donate a fish, which is nothing, but out of nothing, he was able to feed so many people that came to listen to him. And out of nothing, these few loaves of bread were able to feed and not only feed them but have leftovers so the thing is this the generosity brings about so many good things and anyway well i, I say, don't know if that's exactly what i'm going to no, say well, but, but, but it's interesting and I, and i like it because uh, when you think about right now in the world the pandemic world that we live in right now you think about all of these restaurants that are v that are really struggling. I mean, they're sure. really struggling. A lot of them barely survived or are barely still surviving on carry-out business. Right. And still, and still, they decided that for free, they would cook for the frontliners at the hospitals. They would deliver 120 meals courtesy of that restaurant. That, to me, is genuine generosity. Correct. We probably won't survive, but thanks to you, lives may be saved. The least I can do is cook for you. And we saw a lot of that, and I think that we've seen the one really important thing that's come out of this pandemic is people stepping up and really getting the idea of being more generous yes and i think that's what you were talking to i at think the beginning. You, you would give a beautiful homily on sunday by the way <laughs> right. that's exactly what it's all feel, about and feel uh, free to steal it I don't but care. anyway yeah. uh, it's kind of a very interesting point because yeah. we could concentrate on other aspects i suppose but right now that's what's coming through my mind and i'm sure in a lot of priests mind you know uh, sure. i would think i would think let me put it this way are we forced to do that no are we told that that's the way we should do it? No. Each priest has his own way of doing it. No, right. I'm certainly not preaching to priests to do it my way, okay? But you start thinking, you start putting things together. 
you might even wait till late Saturday morning to put it together. Okay, <laughs> right. oh, I would, but um, well, that's where yeah, but that's that, the way I roll. <laughs> yeah, and so then you kind of put it all together, and then you're ready to face the event, which is for Catholics a very big event, the Mass, and so it's a matter of preparing that way. Uh, but again, you have to be careful that it's not too long. I know you have a lot of things to say. I don't mean you, but you know what I mean, generally. And we want to keep it down so that if I could get one point across, I would think that's a success. When we try to bring in a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of here, a little bit of there, well, it confuses people. I think if you could just bring across one point, we would have achieved our goal. I want people from this podcast to take away how hard it is for a priest to not only deliver all of the many great things that you do on a regular basis, and we don't have to list them, we know what they are, but then at night, in the evening, when you want to unwind, you have to remind yourself, no, I've got to get ready for this homily, and I look forward to doing it I because I want so desperately for you to come out of this going... I learned something today, and I'm going to put it into practice. Right. And the closer you get to the weekend, the more urgent it becomes. Sure. And you want to do it right. So we're going to look into getting you a clock (laughs) way in the back. (laughs) And a hook. The average time, they say, for a priest, should roll. I mean, if you Google it, they will say 10 minutes. They'll say, 10 minutes, kind of start wrapping it up. So... I guess a prayer is, in a way, a brief little homily, isn't it? In a way, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for obliging me with that. In a way. I'm not. He's... People don't know me, but yeah, anyway. I <laughs> 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 need my English, but anyway. <laughs> Let's pray. Almost from the moment our feet touch the floor in the morning, unless we don't listen to TV or the radio until later in the day, we begin to hear bad news about our latest crisis. Anxiety and fear can fill our hearts and minds unless we focus on God and His perspective. Our fearful thoughts might cause us to say with the psalmist, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. But the truth is, God is the Christian's safe haven of rest, a solid refuge. The Lord God invites you and me to hold his hand and not fear to respond to fear not for what I am with you. Amen. This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. We'd like to remind you to share the Father Joe Podcast with your friends. You can reach Father Joe at frjoepodcast at gmail.com. And you can find us on Facebook or say, Alexa, play the Father Joe Podcast. We look forward to seeing you next time.